Hey guys, so in this video, what I'm gonna do is integrate PayPal checkout into our Django e-commerce website so we can get this cart total and allow the user to check out either with a default PayPal checkout option or submit their credit or debit card information that's also provided with PayPal. So if they click this button right here, they're gonna see this prompt, they're gonna be able to log into their account and once they're in here, there's their cart total. They're gonna be able to just submit their payment and that payment will go into the PayPal account that we link up here. So if a user doesn't have an account or doesn't wanna use it, they can click this debit or credit card option, fill out this form, and that payment will still go into our PayPal account. So if you're not part of this series, I recommend you check out my other Django PayPal video, um, just because it's a little bit more direct, but this one is for anybody part of the series that wants to integrate it into the website. So right now, currently what we have in that place for the PayPal option is this make payment button. So we're gonna take these buttons right here and replace it with the PayPal option. So we're gonna go to this link right here, which I'll link up in the description, and we're gonna work with client-side integration. So we're gonna take these buttons right here, and this is all the source code that PayPal provides us. So we're gonna go into this code right here and add the buttons into our website. And the other option is server-side integration, which we won't work with, but this is just the ability to process the order on the back end using Python. So I'm gonna keep things simple. We're still gonna send data to the back end, but we're just gonna work with client side integration. So go ahead and look at this link right here. It's gonna be in the description and click through these things. You're gonna be able to see different buttons, different styling for the buttons and so on. So I recommend you check this out, look up the PayPal API and their documentation as we go along and study what we're doing. But we're just gonna go through this code right here and start integrating things. And a few things that I wanted to mention is that we are gonna set up a sandbox account. So what that means is we're gonna send fake payments with a fake account. So this is our normal PayPal account. But if you look at the URL, we have sandbox before. So we have sandbox.paypal.com, which means that any transactions that occur in our testing is gonna to go to a dummy account. So we don't actually have to test real payments to see if they work. Once everything's ready, we're gonna switch this out for a real client ID, and then we can link it up to a real account. So let's go back to our website. And if you look at this debit or credit card option, one thing that you need to really pay attention to is the fact that this will not work if your website does not have an SSL certificate. So if it doesn't have it, PayPal will hide this option to protect user information. And I'm not sure about that PayPal checkout button. I'll have to test that, but I do know that the debit or credit card option will not work if your, pay if your website doesn't have that certificate. So right now we're on localhost, everything's working fine, but once we're live, we will see the issue. So let's open up the website that we're currently working on. So if I refresh this and we go back to our checkout page, go through this process, submit this information. So now we're back to that make payment button. So I'm gonna open up my source code here and we wanna start working within our app called store and we're gonna open up our checkout.html page. So the page that has all those forms here and what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take this make payment button right here. Eventually we're either gonna remove it or comment it out and we also wanna remove the event handler that's attached to that because that's gonna give us a little issue there. So let's go through our steps here. I'm not gonna go over too much about how PayPal checkout works. It's all in the documentation, so I recommend you look that up, but um, essentially here's the process. So if we go through these steps right here, whenever the button is clicked, so your user clicks the button, it sends out an API call, we set up the transaction, and we launch that checkout experience. So that's step number four here. Whenever the user approves the payment, the button goes ahead and calls the orders API, makes a transaction, and then the user sees that confirmation, and we go back into the process of whatever we wanna do after that payment is submitted. So the steps are on this page. Again, this is also in the documentation. I actually just took this image from there and added it in here, so look that over. And we have our sandbox accounts, which we're gonna to get to in a second. So let's start by adding our buttons here. So we wanna replace this section with the button. So what I'm gonna do is go to this URL right here, which is gonna be in the description. And I can't really zoom in here for some reason, it kinda of throws me off. So what we wanna do is first create an empty div with the ID of paypal-button-container. We can make this whatever we want, but I'm just gonna keep that theme. And we're gonna to go to checkout.html and I'm gonna replace or I'm gonna put that underneath PayPal options. So for now, just so we can see it, I'm gonna comment this out. So we're gonna comment out our make payment button and let's comment out that event handler. So it's right here. So we're just gonna set that multi-line comment. We're gonna start above the event handler and then we'll close it out right here. So 
We're still gonna use submit form data, but we're just getting rid of it for now and we're gonna trigger it later on after the payment is submitted. Right now on the website, if we go through this process, we shouldn't see anything in here. So we have an empty div and we wanna go back to the next step here. So we commented out the button, we commented out the event handler, and now what we wanna do is add in that script tag that's gonna give us access to the PayPal API. So if I open this up here, we're just gonna paste this in above our original JavaScript, but underneath our closing tag for our HTML. So it's gonna be at the top of our JavaScript, and we can get that from this link right here. It's on line 15 if you can't really see it. And again, I'm having issues zooming in, so um, you'll be able to see it once I paste it. And I'm gonna put that just above our JavaScript here. So we have that, and what we need to do now, now that we have access to all the buttons here, if we go to the steps here, we want to paste in our own JavaScript just for the PayPal buttons. So I'm gonna put it into its own script tag. In theory, we could put it into uh, where our original JavaScript is, but I wanna keep it above and separate. So we're gonna paste that in, and I'm gonna go over these functions right here and what everything does. So I'll just open up this section, and from line 17 to line 42, we're gonna take everything from the opening to the closing script tag, and we're gonna paste that in just underneath our script tag for the PayPal API, but, the, but above the original JavaScript. So I'm gonna fix this indentation, and we can go over this. So right here, we have PayPal.buttons, which we have access because of this script tag. And within PayPal.buttons, we just render out these buttons to that empty div. So PayPal-buttons-container, which we added right here. So we have that empty div. So the buttons we create get appended to that div. And I should probably say the buttons PayPal generates because we're not actually creating them. We're just accessing PayPal.buttons. PayPal creates them, and then we just render them out right here to that empty div. So we have two main methods. We have our create order method right here, and we have on approve. So create order, what this does is it launches the default PayPal checkout experience. So we set the value right here. This is what we're gonna charge the user. We'll make this value more dynamic to our cart total. And whenever the user goes through that experience and finishes this out and actually finalizes that payment, then we trigger on approve. So we're able to get some transaction information, get the user information, and then do whatever we want after that payment was actually captured. So if I save this, we render out our buttons, so we should see this, and I'm actually gonna go through that payment process. So let's go ahead and finish out this process. We click the PayPal checkout experience. So right now we just triggered create order, and that launched that checkout experience. So if I can find the right link here, we are currently launching our checkout experience. If we look at our total here, so we're gonna connect it with value. We have one cent and this just launched my uh, sandbox account right now. So I'm already signed in and we have our total of one cent. So if I go to pay now, let's go ahead and process this. Once I submitted that, if you go back to our page, we are now finished with our transaction and that pop-up that you just saw was this alert here. So once we completed that, we went to on approve. So those are the two main methods that we're gonna work with. I'm gonna close out some images here and we can go to the next step. So we have our buttons, we can go to step two. So before we actually start dealing with the back end, let's show you some styling that we can do here. So right now, what we're gonna do is add in the style object right here, and we wanna make our buttons blue. So we wanna be able to customize those and touch up a few things. So let's go ahead and just above, or within our paypal.buttons method, just above create order, we're gonna set style, and that's gonna be a JavaScript object, and we're gonna add a comma there. So. There's a few things that I wanna do. One is I wanna make sure that my buttons are rectangle, which I already think they are. So I'll just show you that regardless. So we're gonna make sure that these are rectangle and I also wanna make sure that these are blue. So if you go to this link right here, which I'll also link up in the video description if you don't have access to this website. And if you look at the documentation, here's where we can see all the attributes that we can set on the buttons. So right now, if we wanna make the buttons gold here or this yellow effect, we can set the value of color to gold if we wanna change it to blue, we just set that to blue and a bunch more down here. So these are all the different buttons we can use and all the actual code that goes with it. So let's go back to our object and I'm gonna set the color to blue and that's gonna be a string value. And I'm also gonna set the shape. So remember that we are already ha we already have that rectangle shape, but in order to set that, we can use rect like that or we can change that to pill and make that more round. So now if I go to my page here, 
and refresh this. Go ahead and open up those buttons. Now we have the blue button. So let's go into customization of what buttons actually show. So that's gonna be in step three. So we styled our buttons, that was a really quick step. And we want to, let's say we wanna hide the buttons. So right now, if we want to only show just the PayPal button or in my example, I just wanna show the PayPal option with the debit and credit card option, all we have to do is set which value we wanna hide from these buttons. So if I go to my code here, this is also in the documentation. All we have to do is within our script tag, just after currency, we wanna add the and symbol and we wanna say disable dash funding and then we wanna disable the credit card option. If we wanted to disable the regular card option for the debit card, we would just say card right here, but um, we can also find all of that in the documentation. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna put an and symbol right there and we're gonna say disable dash funding. So which payment options do we wanna disable? In this case, we just wanna disable the credit card option. So I wanna make sure that's spelled right. And once we save that, we should only see the two payment options now. So let's open that up again. And there we go. So now we have our PayPal option and our debit card option. So I wanted to show you that just to give you some more ability to customize your buttons, maybe style them, change up how they look, and uh, just give you more flexibility in your checkout page. So from here, what we're gonna do is actually go in and create our sandbox account. So if I go to my steps here, we're gonna go to part two. And in this section, what we're gonna do, or in this part, is we're first gonna create two accounts here. So one for an account that's gonna receive the money and one that's gonna send it. So for the one that's gonna receive the money, we're gonna create that as a business type. And for the personal account, this is gonna represent a user shopping on our website. So we're gonna use this account to make the payment and send the money into this account. Once we have that, we're gonna go into creating an app within PayPal and then connecting it and generating a client ID. So. We're gonna go in here, we're gonna create the app. Once we get the ID, we can actually connect it and PayPal will know where to send that money. So let's start by going into this link right here and I'm gonna put this into the YouTube description. It's also in my step-by-step -step guide right here. So if you have that, just go visit that link and let me just find that again. So in here, we want to go into Sandbox and we wanna go into accounts. So you can see I already have two accounts here and I'm gonna work with these, but I'll walk you through that creation process. So remember, we need a business and a personal account. So if we go to create account right here, what's gonna happen here is PayPal is gonna prompt us just to create an account type right here so we can choose one and then create another. Uh, the reason why I don't like this method is that it's gonna give us a default password and email to use. So we're gonna go into create custom account. So we're gonna start with the personal, we're gonna create the account in here. We're gonna create an email we wanna attach it to and it could be a fake email. We're not actually gonna send emails there set your password and account information, and then the account balance. So right now, if I go to sandbox.paypal.com, and I'm actually gonna log into one of my accounts right now. So if we go to log in, and I'm gonna log in with my personal account, so just use the email I generated, we're able to set an account balance of whatever we want here. So I set mine originally to a thousand, and then we just made these transactions. So go ahead and within this link, set the account balance. I left everything as default right here, and I believe that was it, and go ahead and create an account. Once that's generated, go back to accounts, or you'll probably be redirected here, create another account, also go to custom right here, create a custom account, and if you made a personal account on your first one, switch this one to business, do the same thing, set the account balance, and click generate. So once we have that, once you created both accounts here, within our guide here. So I kind of walk through that process, show you what to do here. And within step two, we want to create an account that's gonna generate uh, a key for us so PayPal knows where to send this account whenever the transaction's being made from those PayPal buttons. So if we go back to this link right here, within our dashboard, we wanna go to my apps and credentials. So in here, again, I also generated the app. I'm actually gonna create one right now. So make sure we're within Sandbox. Once we go live, we're gonna use this link right here. So go to create app and I'll actually gener generate it with you. So let's just do Ecom Django and we're gonna connect it to the business account. So we can go to that default business one, make sure that you know which account you're attaching it to and we're gonna generate the app here. So once we have the app, we want to get some credentials here. So we need this client ID 
and we're gonna work with a client ID. We use a seeker key whenever we're working on the back end. You don't wanna show anyone this. Uh, the client ID is less sensitive, so it's okay if somebody sees this in the console or um, just somehow finds it just because it's, it's just sending money to your PayPal account. So once we have that, what we can do is go back to our script tag and where we have client dash ID, we have equals and then SB, go ahead and paste that client ID that we just got and replace SB with that. So it ends with and currency. So just make sure that you added that in the right section, save that. And now these PayPal buttons are connected to our account. So whenever a payment is made, we're gonna send money into that dummy account and PayPal actually knows where to send that information and the actual transaction. So we set all of that up. That was part two, that was also pretty simple. Uh, now we're gonna go to part three and test out some payments. So the first thing we wanna do in part three is we wanna test just one payment with that transaction of one cent. So what I'm gonna do is go to the website and we're gonna process the payment. And remember that I have my personal account, so we're gonna start by opening this up. And once that sandbox account is open, we are gonna log in with that personal account. So if you had those two accounts, go ahead and use uh, the one with a type of personal log in right here. So use the email that you generated. Mine is personaldennis at gmail.com. Use whatever you set up and let's find that link that popped up here. So I logged in with that and we're gonna make that transaction. So once I process this, we're gonna go back to our page. We should see an alert and that money was set to the account. So what I'm gonna do is actually pause this because that money can actually take quite a while to actually go into that account. It can take upwards of five to 10 minutes. So I'm gonna wait for that to go in and then what I'm gonna do is log into that account. So right now I am in my personal account. So we should see that payment for the account activity right here in recent activity. So if I log into my personal account, I should see that money outgoing. If I log into my business account, I should see that money going into the account. So let's log in through the business one right now and then we should see that transaction. So I actually just had it paused for about 15 minutes. For some reason that transaction took a while and that seems to be normal. I often get alerts and then see that payment go through 20 to 30 minutes later, but here we go. Today is May 19th and we just saw that transaction of one cent. So because we're in the sandbox account, it just gave us a name right there and the payment went through. So now what we can do in the steps here, right now we're only charging one cent to the user. What we wanna do is actually set that price. So what I'm gonna do is get our cart total and we're gonna place that total above within the second script tag. So we're actually gonna move it and we're gonna add it into the script tag. And then we need to make sure that our total here doesn't have more than two decimal places to the right. So sometimes when you're calculating float fields, you get this funny number and that decimal place just kind of continues forever. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure we turn that string into a float field and then we're gonna use two fixed right here and set this value to two decimal places to the right. So this is the JavaScript way of limiting the decimal places to the right. So let's go ahead and start that process. So we're gonna take our total from the original script tag. We're gonna remove it and I'm gonna paste that just above our PayPal.buttons option. So there's our total. And what we can do now is grab this total, replace it right here. And we're first gonna change this to a float field. So we're gonna say parse, float, and that's gonna be a capital F, and I need to make sure I spell float right, so F-L-O-A-T. So we're gonna turn that into a float field. Once that's a flow field, the reason why we turn it into a flow field is because we can't use that uh, to fix method and set the decimal places unless it's an actual flow field. So we can't do that to a string, which is the current value. So we can use to fixed, and we're gonna set this to two decimal places to the right, so now that number is fixed, we have that total so we can access this in here and this value is also available right here. So the reason why we needed to move it up is because we didn't wanna call total right here if the value is down here. So we would get an error if that was the case. So now if I refresh this and we'll go open up the PayPal checkout option, we should see our cart total in here. So right now, instead of one cent, we should see whatever the value was of our entire cart. So we have 95 cents right here. That is the cart total, so everything is looking good. And if we were to check out that process in our transaction history, we should see that full value 
and that payment would go through. So now if we go to the next step, we just set the price, we made that dynamic. And what we need to do now is actually process this order on the back end. So if we went through this process, the payment would go through. But if you notice the first time we did it, we never cleared our car and we didn't actually place that order on the back end. So what I need to do now, originally when we click that make payment button, all we have to do is grab submit form data. And remember, if you're part of the series, you're familiar with all of this. We just need to take this function and change when it gets sent. So right here, I'm gonna erase that alert and we're gonna paste that in here. So whenever that payment is complete, we're gonna trigger submit form data. And if we go ahead and search for this function, remember that this function sends all this data to the backend and then it actually has its, an, its own alert. We clear the cart data, we redirect the user back to the home page, and the order is complete. Now, one thing I did wanna mention is the fact that whenever that payment is submitted, I've had multiple people mention the fact that if my total is set right here, so we have it set in this variable, that anybody can go into the console and manipulate the price, and that's true. So this is something that we already took care of earlier where in the back end, what we do is we just check the total value. So we get the value from the data submitted and we make sure that it's with the cart total. So the cart total is not something that somebody on the front end can manipulate. So we confirm that. And if for some reason that total does not match whatever the user submitted, we'll know that the user manipulated the price or something else went wrong. So in this case, the user cannot manipulate the price because we are confirming things on the back end. Now that we confirm that total, we submit that form data, let's just go through that process and see what happens. So remember on approve, once the payment is made, we trigger submit form data and we should see this car actually cleared and we should be redirected. So let's actually make the payment and I keep opening up tabs here for some reason. And I just keep using default data. We're gonna go through this process. We should see that car total of, I believe it was $94 and we're signed in from our personal sandbox account. And once this opens up, we'll process this and we'll be redirected. So let's go ahead and confirm that total. We're gonna to hit pay now. And eventually once this is done, so right now we're gonna be redirected, submit form data was triggered. So transaction is complete. That was from that method. Our car is clear and the order was processed. So this means that everything on the back end in our view where we confirm that total went well because we don't clear the car unless the total matches what the car total was. So it means everything went well that transaction is complete. If we log in, we'll see it. And eventually we'll see that $94 appear in here. And that's it for this entire checkout process. Now, if you want to go through that live process and actually use a live client ID, I'm gonna need to log in again into that sandbox account because it keeps checking me out here. So remember we log in with our real PayPal account and let's go into my apps here. So this is the last thing that you need to do once you're going live. So go to the live link here create the app and we're gonna use the live client ID. And what you're gonna to have to do is go into wherever you have this script tag and just update this with that live client ID and that should take care of everything. And the last thing, because I know that somebody's gonna miss this part, remember that that credit card form will not work once this is live if you don't have, uh, if you don't have the client ID. So, or not the client ID, but if your website is not uh, SSL certified. If you don't have that ticket, this option will not open up. So uh, make sure you have that. That's it for this video. I might continue adding to the series later. The intention was just to show that uh, payment integration with a guest and user account. So I'll just keep adding, but that's it for now as far as the modules that go with this website. And we just completed the payment integration. So I'll see you guys in another video.